Hi, I'm Vivian. I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week, we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and then we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week, we're talking about Season 3, Episode 11, Nude Beach. This episode was written by Scott Jacobson, directed by Wes Archer, and it aired January 13th, 2013. And we have no preconceived notions of what this episode is about based on the title. No, not at all. Not Not a clue. Not in the slightest. (laughs) We have one guest actor this week. Fred Armisen voices Tommy Geronda. He's best known for SNL and also his show Portlandia. I didn't actually recognize his voice at all in this episode, so I was quite surprised to hear it was him. I've never watched Portlandia or seen him on SNL, so... I feel like if you saw his face, you would know who he is. Possibly. Yeah. Is he an older gentleman? No. We're done here. <laughs> The store next door was Scroto Rooter Vasectomy Clinic, which I love. I think that's great. <laughs> Scroto Rooter? Yeah. Of course, the play on Roto Rooter. No, I don't know what that is. It's a company oh. that does like plumbing and stuff. <laughs> that's very random. Okay. <laughs> the exterminator van was Hit the Rodent Jack. That's cute. Yeah, very cute. And we had a few burgers of the day. Don't go brocking my heart with broccoli and artichoke hearts. Eggers can't be cheesers with a fried egg and cheese. That one's cute. Yeah. And freedom of choice comes with bok choy. So I'm just going to quickly dive into freedom of choice because I think it's great. Uh, It's a Devo song called freedom of choice. Oh, okay. I did not know it was a reference to anything. Yeah. So it's it's part of the the musical theme of this episode. There's a lot of musical references, which is great. In the freedom of choice song there's some great lyrics that that are related to an episode of Fork and Bullshirt that we did last week. Oh, okay. Which is our The Good Place podcast. And in the song Freedom of Choice, there's a repeated verse slash chorus. In ancient Rome, there was a poem about a dog who found two bones. He picked at one, he licked the other, he went in circles, he dropped dead. Oh. <laughs> which is great because it's a direct reference to the burden's ass paradox. Yeah. Yeah. So where there's a donkey and he's put between two food objects or food and water and you can't make a choice between which to go to and he ends up just dying. Yeah. (laughs) So I thought that was great. That makes sense because the paradox is like a comment on free will. Mm -hmm. How we have free will and that can be a burden at times. Yeah. All right. So shall we get right into our episode? Let's do it. During an inspection, Hugo the health inspector tells Bob and Linda about the recently opened nude beach. While visiting the beach, Linda discovers that Hugo has taken a leave of absence from work and become a nudist. Unfortunately, the new health inspector, Tommy Geronda, is even worse than Hugo. But in a different way. A very different way. He forces Bob to let him play his terrible rock music at the restaurant, which drives away customers. When Bob refuses to let him continue, Tommy shuts down the restaurant. Bob has to compete in a nude cathalon, so Hugo will return to his job. Bob loses, but Hugo returns to work anyway, and Bob caters the nude cathalon closing ceremony. This is one of my favorite episodes. Oh, yeah? I think of all time. Wow. For Bob's. I absolutely love every aspect of it. (laughs) Okay. So. (laughs) All right, so... (laughs) Tell me why. There's just something about nudity in cartoons that is hilarious. <laughs> okay. And Jean and Louise and Tina's ambitious work, their ambitious desire to sell tickets to, to spy on the nude beach, and the whole Tommy's musical, like his songs are just every, every bit of this episode just works together so well. Okay. So the stories like the individual plots all mesh together really well they're all in sync and there's a lot of memorable quotes lots oh yeah all right so let's start kind of towards the beginning so when hugo is telling bob and linda about the nude beach and he's complaining that it's disgusting and they should have their food licenses taken away from them 
Tina says, that's how vendors served food in the Bible. Okay, I'm still really curious <laughs> about the Belcher's religion. Because, like, I hear that and I think, oh, has Tina read the Bible? I mean, it's a joke, obviously, but... And obviously they what? didn't serve in the nude because people wore clothes even back then. That wasn't yeah. even that long ago, like a couple thousand years. Unless she's thinking that Adam and Eve had, like, a hot dog cart nearby. <laughs> You know? I like to believe so. They got hungry, I'm sure. They were people. Mm -hmm. But they were in the garden, so they could just eat the fruits. Yeah, well, sometimes you get tired of apples and you want a hot dog, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love how Hugo says, you leave re religion out of this. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay, so on the topic of the kids this episode, how on earth are Bob and Linda okay with what the kids are doing? Would you not be? No. Why not? Because she's nine. She doesn't so, need to be peeping at people. She's curious. No. No, I would not be okay with my kids doing this. I think it's very different what they're doing as opposed to spying through somebody's window. Yes, but the whole point of not allowing anyone under 18 at the beach is that people aren't supposed to be seeing you unless they are of age, mm -hmm. which I have another comment on that, but... It feels like a violation of some kind. Like, I know you can go on the internet and you can go find porn, regardless of what age you are, which is sort of what they argue about in this episode when they're telling the boys, oh, well, these are real bodies, mm -hmm. you know? Right. It just feels dirtier, I guess, because it's most likely going to be people they know. So what about all the other new beaches around the world that are public access? Kids are allowed there, too. Well, that's... I don't know that for some reason that feels different, which I don't think they should be public access. I just don't think kids should be allowed. It feels weird. Hmm. You're a prude. Basically. Oh, I'm definitely a prude. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I, I would not get naked in front of other people. I think like a lot of other people. <laughs> I think Bob is just encouraging. Well, not encouraging, but he's not telling them to stop because he knows they're being creative. They're exploring. They're being kids. They're going to do it regardless of whether he says yes or no. I guess. You and can't the, stop them. And the nude beach, there's not, it's not like you're watching a porn, right? It's, it's not an beach. orgy beach. No, it's just a nude beach. And everybody has naked bodies. It's just weird. What if they saw one of their teachers there? It's just weird. <laughs> uh, okay, and then the whole thing on the sign where it says clothing optional and no one under eight or no one, yeah, under 18 is permitted. Then I start thinking, oh, well, 18 seems really young. Like, if I went on the beach right now, I could have, like, ex-students of mine, since I taught high school, I could have ex-students of mine walking around naked on the beach, and if I was there naked on the beach, like, um, no, most horrifying encounter of my life, thank you, never. I think happening. you're missing the point of a nude beach. I know. You're completely, you're looking at it as nudity, <laughs> and they're looking at it as freedom. I know. All I see is nudity. I don't see freedom. Right, you're not I in the like same clothes. mindset. Clothes is nice. It keeps you warm. Right. So, <laughs> beaches that are nude are not your thing. Okay, Which so... Which is fine. <laughs> you don't have to be okay with it, no. but you can't, you can't just tell people that it's not okay. No, I, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm saying I would be incredibly uncomfortable. Right. So, since basically I've pretty much answered that I would not go on a nude beach, now I'm curious, would you? Nope. Oh, how come? You're calling me a prude and you wouldn't go? No, I'm fine with nude beaches. I'm just not comfortable. Oh. Okay, you're just less vocal about it than yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think it's a big thing. Okay, let me frame it a different way. So, would you go on a nude beach? Like, would you go to a nude beach and be nude in a country that no one knew you? Like, where no one knew who you are and you don't know anybody? No, so I don't there's... think it makes a difference. Oh, okay. I feel like it makes a difference to me. Like, I would 100% not go to a nude beach in my hometown mm -hmm. where i could very likely see someone i know but if there was a nude beach in like the south of france maybe but still pretty darn doubtful you don't think it might be like a bonding experience like if you saw someone you know you're like hey you enjoy being free from clothes as much as i do this is great we have something we can chat about no nope. how awesome is this nope no nope. feel the sand between my crack 
Nah, I'm just going to stare at your private bits and get really weird about it. <laughs> and then you'd be kicked off because people would feel Well, weird. not like stare, but like not want to stare. Sort of like a, I don't want to look, but I can't not look like a car crash. Right. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm certain that a lot of people are going to be listening to this and going, oh, be comfortable with your body, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, be- dude. I don't want to go on a nude beach. <laughs> Maybe we're not comfortable with other people's bodies all around us either. Yeah, exactly. You know how Bob says, well, I don't want to go there because it's going to be a bunch of overweight, out of shape, old bodies, and I'm going to realize I look just like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't care for that. Just last thing before we do move on. I do like that Linda is super comfortable going to this nude beach. Good for her. Mm-hmm. You know, self-confidence is a beautiful thing. And I like that there is no hint of jealousy from Bob. Even when he finds out that uh, Linda and Hugo saw each other there. Mm-hmm. He's more surprised that Hugo is there. Yeah, but he has, there's no mention of, wait a minute, Hugo saw you topless, Hugo saw you naked, whatever. Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's not a concern. Yeah. Because at a nude beach, the naked body is not a sexualized object. It's just people. Mm. It's a different mindset. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the hardest Why do you think thing. that Linda is holding her arms in front of her chest, though, when she's because talking she's to Hugo? Because she's not as comfortable as Gretchen. Well, she only does it when she's talking to Hugo. Mm-hmm. Maybe because she's like, well, we did date once, so that's weird. And also, she's in the main shot. Yeah, but you could, like, shoot her from the, you know, neck up. So, moving on. So, the hand-washing video that Hugo wants Bob to watch has you wash your hands for a thousand seconds. Yeah, that's way too long. That's like 17 minutes of hand washing. (laughs) That's way too long. That's way too long. (laughs) This episode also taught me a little bit of history. Oh, yeah? When the kids were slashing through the the bushes to get to the the bluff, they were talking about the Lewis and Clark expedition, and Tina says, I'll be the Sacagawea. Of sacks. Yeah, of sacks. (laughs) And I had no idea what that was, so I looked it up, and uh, Sacagawea traveled with the Lewis and Clark expedition thousands of miles from North Dakota to the Pacific Ocean, and helped establish cultural contacts with the Native American populations. And Sacagawea was a woman? Yes. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) She traveled with Lewis and Clark. Okay. I don't know why Tina says the Sacagawea, because it just seems like that was her name. Hmm. I knew of her, like I've heard the name before, I just didn't really know anything about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. I like it, but we're also kind of making a ball sack joke about her name, which is unfortunate, (laughs) so there is that. Yeah, well, you know, it's Gene. Yeah, true. Gene also has a nice line in this episode when he says, No one can make you feel like a turd without your permission. Eleanor Roosevelt. She definitely did not say that. She did not, but he was pretty close. The actual quote is, No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Which is pretty much the same thing, so good job, He just paraphrased. Yeah, he paraphrased. He just made it relatable to today's adults and teens. Yeah, he modernized the the quote. Mm -hmm. Made it hip and cool. Hip and cool. That's Gene, all right. (laughs) When Linda comes into the restaurant to tell Bob that she saw Hugo at the beach, she describes what his actions were like, and she says that he was playing in the waves, dancing around, And he looked like Madonna in the Cherish video. And I had never seen the Cherish video and I had never heard the song. So, of course, I did some research and it was very extensive. And I watched the music video and it was pretty ridiculous. It's Madonna playing around in the beach in the waves, just like Linda says. And there's mermaids dancing around and it's really supposed to be sensual and like playful and erotic at the same time. And it's just weird. Isn't one of the mermaids, like, way too young? Yeah, one of the mermaids is, like, I don't know, like, a nine-year-old boy with curly hair. And the other mermaids are, like, super buff dudes. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird Odd video. Choice. Yeah, I, I definitely recommend watching it. All right. And uh, I believe you did a little editing magic, did you not? Yeah, there'll be a little surprise on our Twitter page and our Facebook page. Yeah, go check it out. <laughs> so then we get Hugo's replacement. Tommy Geronda. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I have to say I am ashamed at how often I sing his songs because I sing them a lot. She definitely does. <laughs> and they're really bad. They're so bad. But they're so catchy. No? I mean, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good at sex. You're bad at sex. I'm good at sex. You're bad at sex. It's just... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> sex, sex, sex. Oh, by the way, never sing that song when you're actually about to have sex or after having consummated. <laughs> it's just in bad taste. <laughs> I like him because he's so ridiculous, but at the same time, you end up finding out that he's so much worse than Hugo. Mm -hmm. Like, you just think, oh, he's going to be a pain. Like, he's just going to be kind of an awkward guy that Bob's going to have to deal with. But then he starts dropping rat turds everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, no, you should be suspended. Like, you should be fired for this offense, which we never see him again. After this episode, so maybe he did get fired. I'm going to headcanon that. He got fired for his weird rat turd... Oh, I think he's in jail. ...collection. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Playing his super awesome music in jail. Mmm. Except we do see him in the end of the episode. We see him at Jimmy Pesto's, Mm -hmm. which is super satisfying. Love it. Ugh. Get wrecked, Jimmy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have a whole lot to say about Tommy. I don't really like him no i mean as as a character obviously i dislike him because you're kind of supposed to Mm -hmm. but which is your favorite of his songs the sex song the elderly prostitute the uh wait i'm guessing the itsy bitsy spider or itsy bitsy whatever climbed up the glassy pole that's probably the elderly prostitute song right i doubt it okay well that one because that's a stripper that's not a prostitute or wait did i already say daddy nope Okay, or Daddy. Definitely go with Daddy. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Because that's the one you can, you know, sing along to. Yeah, if you're Teddy. (laughs) If you're Teddy. Which that kind of gives us a little insight into Teddy's character. Yeah. You know, maybe he didn't have a great relationship with his dad. Oh, I bet he had a great relationship with his whole family. He's just weird. Mm, I don't think he did. (laughs) And I kind of hate that Tommy tells Teddy to stop singing along with him. Like, who does that? What musician is like, no, no, don't sing along with me. The whole point. Have you met Tommy? I mean, yeah, he's he terrible. sucks. He sucks. He's the worst, right? Maybe that's why he gravitates towards Bob. Not Tommy. Teddy. Bob's a pushover. No, but Teddy gravitates towards Bob because he didn't have a good father figure, and neither did Bob. So he sees a kindred soul. Plus, Bob is like the dad of this family that he really loves and idealizes. Anyway, I think there's an element of something there. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I could see that. And then, of course, Tommy... So let's get back to the nude beach. Let's do it. The nude cathalon sounds like a terrible idea, Mm -hmm. but probably really funny to witness. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Really entertaining. Very floppy. Would not want to participate ever. I mean, the wheelbarrow? Really? That's the worst choice of event. So bad. And I'm pretty sure, isn't Bob doing it with like an old guy? I think so. So it's just like... (laughs) <laughs> wrinkly butt okay so that's another thing i wanted to mention that in an episode full of nakedness mm-hmm. there's actually less than five seconds of butts huh. you never see a butt crack for more than a few frames okay so you don't see cheeks or anything like you see the shape the outer the outer shape but you'll never see the actual crack mm-hmm. which is really interesting to me because i've noticed that a lot on live television as well they're okay with showing the full naked body, but like from the back, but they'll never show the crack mm. unless there's a very specific circumstance or situation or they minimize it, which is really weird. Like even in shows like Hannibal, if somebody right. is naked, they'll either cover it in shadow. And I'm talking about just the crack. They'll cover it in shadow or put something just put something in front of it. it hmm. It's really weird. I do remember watching an episode from, I believe, Hannibal season four, season three. Oh, they didn't get season four. Right. Okay. Season three. And there was a painting of a nude body and they actually blurred the butt. And I was like, really? It's a painting, dude. Like, it's a beautiful classical painting and it's a blurred butt. Censorship is out of this world. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on shows like Hannibal, where they have no aversion to showing decapitated bodies and blood and guts. And and I mean, this is animated. It's animated butt crack. Can we yeah. really not do that for more than a few frames? Mm-hmm. Not that you necessarily want it. I mean, if you're Louise, you definitely don't because you're looking at your dad's butt crack. And if you're Tina, you definitely do. 
That's true. I love Louisa's line when she's looking through the through the telescope and she says, Dad, stop stretching like that. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> she is <laughs> scarred for life. Yeah. So, see, this is the problem. She just saw her dad naked. That's weird. At least it's weird in my mind. I know some people have seen their parents naked, especially when they were kids. Like, maybe they took baths together or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't happen in my family. Maybe this is why I'm prudish. Whatever. (laughs) But uh, there was definitely none of that going on. So, and Louise gets another great line. When Bob is sadly defeated by Hugo, Mm -hmm. and she says, naked and defeated, just how he entered this world. Dang, Louise with the hard truth. Yeah, (laughs) it's a great line. And she yells, sweep the leg, dad, which is a direct Karate Kid reference. Oh, nice. And there's another Karate Kid reference, which is when they're doing the new decathlon. Um, The song that Hugo is singing, the overlay during the, the montage is You're the Best which was made popular because it was in the film Karate Kid. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Never seen that movie. Yeah, You're the Best was actually written by Bill Conti and Ali Willis, and it was performed by Joe Esposito. Now, Ali Willis actually also wrote I'll Be There For You, which is the Friends theme song. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. And uh, the You're the Best song was actually originally intended to be the Rocky Three theme song. Oh. Which was turned into the eye of the tiger later on of much course. better yeah although i haven't heard the original song this hugo sung version of the best around you're the best you're the best yeah was not great no it's not great probably just because it's hugo singing it though mm-hmm. Ugh. i wish it had been h john benjamin singing it, it <laughs> that would have been, been great yeah but you know hugo does win which is such an uncomfortable moment because then he's just like sitting on Bob's stomach and I'm like, you're naked. Maybe you can get off of him now. Yeah, your business is all up in his all business. All up in his business. And anyway, it's just, it's, it's weird. But I did notice there's no ounce of gay panic in this episode. Nope. So Bob's uncomfortable, yes, when he's doing the wheelbarrow thing. But I'm thinking it's just more of... His view. His view is not great. <laughs> yeah. But it's not like, oh, no, I can't possibly touch you and in this wrestling match, oh, no, which can't is touch so not man. sexual. Yeah, exactly. There's none of that. And when Bob is angry at the end, it's angry. he's angry because he lost, not because Hugo's penis is touching his stomach. Yeah. None of that. So, good on you, Bob's Burgers writers. Are there any other television shows that you remember dealing with nudity like this? No. No, no animated shows, no. No, I feel like this is quite unique. There's an episode of The Simpsons from season nine. Uh, It's episode 25. It's called Natural Born Kissers, where Marge and Homer try to spice up their sex life by making love in public or in public spaces. The final part of the episode, they are actually on the run because they're about to be caught and they're completely naked. They can't find their clothes. Oh. So the last, there's several scenes of them running around naked, obstructed very cleverly by objects or people or things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the first time you see Marge's rear end completely naked. I mean, we've seen Homer's butt and Bart's butt for years. Yeah, a million times. It's no problem there. It was a really good episode and it's a lot of fun. And they had to fight the censors for it a lot because of the content and because of the nudity. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a really great moment that I always love. They're standing in front of lawn ornaments and they're like wind chime things. So there's like spin wheels in front of Marge's breasts and there's log cutters in front of Homer's groin area. And they're like, <laughs> what? And he, they're just like two guys sawing a log back and forth. <laughs> and he says to her, he says, Marge, can we switch? I don't trust these guys. Oh my God. That's really funny. I thought you were going to say that there were wind chimes in front of homer's crotch and i was gonna say well that relates to the good place too (laughs) (laughs) no but that's i think that's the only episode of television or animated television that i can really recall that deals with nudity in a semi-similar fashion i mean family guy has always had nudity but it's more just like peter being naked and gross and yeah just it's not dealt with in the same way no and even that episode of the simpsons that you're talking about It's still nudity in a sexual context. Mm -hmm. It's so different in this episode of Bob's. We don't really get a lot of 
nudity at all from the show. It's not sexualized at all in this episode, which is interesting. Yeah, like, I'm trying to think of the most sexualized nudity we see in an episode, and the closest thing I can think of is when Bob does a little strip tease for Linda for Valentine's Day, and you see him in his underwear. Yeah. And that's it. And then we see the patrons at Jimmy Pesto's who can see him because the windows are open when he says something like, and the underwear is coming off in their reaction. But we don't actually see Bob taking his underwear off. Yeah. And even then that moment is really sweet. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's super sweet. Like he's trying to do something nice for his wife. So, yeah. All right. Do you have any final thoughts about this episode? Not really. I think we covered pretty much everything. Okay, so shall we get to our Burgers of the Week? Sure. How many do you have this week? Two. Okay, I have three, and they are not great, so we'll see how it goes. It's really hard to find stuff that rhymes with or goes with naked or nude, I found, so... You just didn't try hard enough. Maybe not. Okay, (laughs) all right, I'll tell you my first one. Okay. Oh, no, you're gonna hate it. Okay. (laughs) It's called the birthday shoot burger. Oh my god! <laughs> Does it have bamboo shoots? Yes. Excellent. That's what it comes with. <laughs> the birthday shoot. All right. Okay. We get to see Bob in his birthday shoot this episode. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, he's not that fat. Everyone's always calling him fat, but like in comparison to Hugo, who's able to camouflage an entire fanny pack under his gut. Bob and is has, not that big. He has no shame, too. I love it. Oh, where's your fanny pack? It's Just right here. Lift it up. Lift it up. He's all proud. That's great. Love it. I'm sure it's a fanny pack that he made. A human flesh. <laughs> oh, gross. No. Okay, tell me your first burger. The full frontal noodle tea. <laughs> no. <laughs> noodle. <laughs> What is it? It's a ramen burger. Oh my god, you and your ramen burgers. It's like it was, the third one. Yeah, but it was it worked <laughs> too perfectly. I couldn't not do it. Full frontal noodle tea. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, okay. I know. It's pretty awesome, <laughs> not gonna lie. It's better than my next one. Uh yeah, my next two are not great. Uh, okay. My next one is naked and unheated burger. <laughs> It comes with beef tartare. What? <laughs> which is like raw beef. So naked, naked and unheated? Unheated. What's the pun? That the beef tartare hasn't been cooked. Yeah, <laughs> naked the... and defeated. Oh, naked and defeated. <laughs> oh, naked okay. and defeated, naked and unheated. It's not good. <laughs> I told you it was not good. Okay. I tried. Well... That was interesting. Okay. Tell it me probably your... wouldn't be a tasty burger either. No, beef tartare would probably be oh, really good. That's true, yeah. If you eat beef, you know, right. I'm sure you'd Maybe. like it. Maybe. I don't know. I've never tried raw meat when I used to eat it, so I have no comment. That's okay. Fair. What's the last one? So I didn't really realize that this was kind of a ripoff of a burger that was already in this episode. Oh. So my my second burger is Brock and Roll, which is served on a dinner roll and with broccoli. Oh, so just Brock and Roll because of Tommy Drondel's songs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, what was the what was the burger of the day? Don't go Brock in my heart. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's close enough. I mean, it's not It's not the same. It's no, close it's but same. not. Close but so, not. So, yeah. It's all good. It counts. Yeah. Okay. And your last one? My last pun burger is O'Chanterelle, the O'Chanterelle burger, which is like a play on Au Naturel. Wow, you really pushed the envelope on this one. I really did. <laughs> and it would come with chanterelles, obviously, which are mushrooms or fun, vampy, gothy characters on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, really? Yeah. Remember no. Chanterelle? She later becomes Anne on Angel. Hmm. Yeah. Weird. Mm -hmm. She picked a mushroom for a name. I'm judging you hard, girl. Okay. (laughs) So, which is your favorite of mine? I think I can tell. The first one? Yeah, the bamboo shoot. Or the birthday shoot burger. Yeah. Okay. And mine is your... What was it? Full Full frontal frontal noodle tea? tea? Okay, full frontal noodle tea. It's even fun to say. 
That is a ridiculous one. See, I want to do rock, paper, scissors, but then I want your burger to win. So I think that tells me my answer is that full frontal noodle tea should win. (laughs) Isn't it fun to say? It is fun to say. I like it. It's good. You did a good job. All right. We'll do full frontal noodle tea. Okay. That is our winning burger. Oh, very nice. So that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week, a Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening. The best way to spread the word or show your support is by leaving us a rating and a review on iTunes or sharing us on social media with your friends. If you want to discuss nude beaches and inappropriate rock music, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can always send us an email from our website, multiverseradio.ca. And in one of those universes, I'm sure the entire world is a nude beach. Can you only go to a clothed beach? Ooh, yeah. And then you get people who are like, oh, yeah, this is so freeing. Yeah. My jeans Weird. are freeing. Next week, we'll discuss Season 3, Episode 12, Broadcast Wagstaff School News. Cool. Fun stuff. It's a kid's episode. Yeah. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. And not like Adam's hot dog. Ew, Jason. Keep and I love PG. <laughs> Next week we're gonna do. Next week we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs>